I'm Jen, this is Remembered Reads, and this is my second book outlet haul of the month. Uh, ever since finding out about this website, I've been doing way too much shopping on there. I feel like if so, let's take a look at what's in here. Aside from the packing. Packing. More packing. All right, on top we have The Backwash of War which is a field hospital in the First World War, and it this is that the, uh, the TV show The Crimson Field was based on, I think loosely based on from what I know. Um, I think it'll be an interesting read. I really like this edition. I saw this at the Imperial War Museum last year. I was tempted to buy it, but it was like nine pounds and I'm cheap. And now it was one US dollar, so of course I bought it. Next up, we have The Last Taxi Ride, which is a, a mystery series where the detective is not a detective, he's a New York City taxi driver. You never go wrong with a good mystery. Uh, classic this time, Edmund Blunden's The Undertones of War. I'm clearly on a bit of a First World War kick again, so um, I read this a number of years ago. I had it from the library once, I never owned a copy, so it was fun to see this relatively new, Pat Barker's Noonday. This is uh, a follow-up to with the same characters from Life Class and Toby's Room, which I have on the shelf behind me here. Um, it's the same characters who were, were in an art school in the first book, and then it was sort of the post-First World War uh, section with the second book, and then this, I believe, is in the 40s, with, again, the same characters. Yeah. Bring the blitz. So that'll be interesting. I always really like Pat Parker's writing. Um, the Regeneration series is probably some of my favorite books in general, so looking forward to this. Continuing on the theme, this is uh, the Daughters of Mars. This is by the, the author who wrote Schindler's List, I believe, and it is about Australian nurses during the First World War. Looking forward to reading that as well. Here's one that's on a different topic. This is Ismail Kadira's The Siege, which is about uh, 15th century Albania and uh, fighting the Ottoman Empire for independence, I believe, in those days. So I'm looking forward to reading that. I have read any Albanian authors before, so new to me. Next up, Dark Terror, which I believe is a middle grade book about the First World War. I believe it's Canadian, yeah, because it was a finalist for the Governor General's Award. I'm interested in writers look at the First World War and make it not sanitized, but write about it for younger readers. So I'm interested in seeing how this turns out, because I think this was just from a couple of years ago. So Okay, continuing on a Canadian theme, we have Austin Clark's Moore, which it was short, it was, no, no, it was long listed for the Giller Prize. But I heard this described as a love poem to Toronto, so I will be curious to read that. I don't know much else about it, but it was well reviewed when it came out a few years ago, so. Uh, next up is Stay Where You Are and Then Leave by John Boyne. This is another middle grade aimed First World War novel. John Boyne, I think, is best known because his another one of his middle grade books, The Boy in the Striped Pajamas, was made into a movie a few years ago. Um, he has written, um, I guess, adult aimed books like The Absolutist, which I liked elements of. I had issues with some of the things that happened in there. Some there were elements of the plot that were presented as being sort of something you discover later, not so much twists, but hidden. But they weren't. They were fairly well telegraphed at the beginning. And it wasn't particularly a plot-driven book. It was about uh, the First World War, and without giving too much away, uh, there's a character who's dealing with the fact that someone he served with had been executed uh, during the war for cowardice. And there were elements of the way the relationship was presented and the um, not modern day, but the later setting that I thought were maybe better done in other books. I remember I read it actually um, just before I read uh, 
Toby's room, which I just mentioned, because it's in that same series that the other Pat Barker novel is in. And it dealt with a secondary plot in this that dealt with a similar issue, and I think it was better dealt with in this. In any case, I've often heard that his uh, middle grade books are better than his adult novels, so we'll see if that's true. I, ne I haven't read The Boy in the Striker Gems. The Absolutist is the only book of his I've read before, but I was curious and on a first world war kick. So something different. Uh, the Shadow Throne by Django Wexler. This is the second book in the Shadow Campaigns series. Um, I haven't read the first book, but I'm one of those people who doesn't mind reading series like this out of order, so I may pick up the first one or I may just start with this. I always feel like with a lot of plot-driven fantasy you can objectively look at how much you like it if you read them out of order just because then you're less concerned with the plot and you're you can focus on the other other elements better because you have less of a focus on oh what's happening but in any case it's um that same kind of industrial revolution set fantasy as opposed to the medieval set fantasy which are fun so looking forward to that now we're heading back to the first world war and we've got the first world war the poets knew uh, that's nonfiction, obviously, uh, history. I'm curious to see how this is going to be. It's, it has a lot of the standard, you know, Rupert Brooke, Isaac Rosenberg, Siegfried Sassoon, Wilfred Owen stuff in it. I mean, I have a lot of biographies of the poets on their own. I'm curious to see what different angle this author is going to take. Um, and it was like a dollar fifty. So, hey. And finally, we have one more piece of non-fiction, this time on the Crimean War, which I decided to buy. I was uh, having a conversation with my neighbor about Black Beauty, and we were talking about how uh, none of the movies include the side stories, like the one about the old war horse, who uh, I believe was in the cavalry in the Crimean War, and I thought to myself, I haven't read that much about the Crimean War. So I looked for this on Book Outlet, and so this book is the reason I picked up all that other stuff. <laughs> the reason I'm shopping, I'll look for other things too. So, yeah, looking forward to reading that because it's not a conflict that I know a huge amount about. That is it, empty box. So yeah, that was some good shopping. Should be some interesting reading. And uh, <laughs> I have placed a third order since then, so there'll be another one of these at some point. And then hopefully I'm going to stop buying books for a couple of months because I think I'm good for a while now. And uh, that's it. Ciao.